In the first part of this tape, you will be shown how to taxi an aircraft. The second part deals with the range of attitudes and movements through which the aircraft will normally be operated. Taxiing is the term used for maneuvering an aircraft on land or water. You taxi the aircraft to get it into position for takeoff and to return it to the apron after landing. It is important you commit the layout of your home airport to memory so that you can find the runways and taxiways as efficiently as possible. In strange airports, ask the control tower or ground control for assistance if you have any doubt about correct taxiing procedure. At all controlled and some uncontrolled airports, taxiways are identified by names from the phonetic alphabet. This is Alpha, Bravo, Charlie, Delta, Echo, and so on. At smaller, less complex airports, they may be identified by numbers. Airports with only one taxiway may have no special identifier at all. When taxiing, be sure to use the anti-collision lights and navigation lights on your aircraft to make it more visible. Clearance to proceed is granted by the tower and it might sound like this. The clearance gives you permission to taxi your aircraft to the runway but not onto it. In this example, you do not have to ask permission to cross other runways, but it is your responsibility to make sure they are clear before proceeding across. When the tower wants you to report runway crossings, the controller will say so in your taxi clearance. Now, let's get your aircraft moving. To start taxiing, it takes more engine power than it does to keep the aircraft moving. Reduce the power once the aircraft starts to move. Also, test the brakes to determine what condition they are in. Most single-engine aircraft have steerable nose wheels or tail wheels that are interconnected to the rudder system. Generally, you should be able to move the aircraft on the ground using these wheels alone, without using the brakes to assist turning. To turn the aircraft right, press the right rudder pedal forward. Using the left rudder turns the plane left, to go straight ahead, neutralize the rudder pedals. In aircraft with differential braking systems, that is a separate brake for each wheel, a turn may be assisted by applying the brake on the same side as the rudder pedal being used. However, use the brake sparingly and lightly. Do not try to turn an aircraft by having it pivot around a stationary main wheel. This puts a twisting strain on the wheel and strut assembly. The amount of rudder needed to turn the aircraft will depend upon the radius of the turn, condition of the taxiway surface, speed of the aircraft, and wind conditions on the ground. It also depends on whether the aircraft has a nose wheel or tail wheel landing gear assembly. Wind has the most influence on how much rudder is required. One thing to watch out for if you are taxiing an aircraft with a tail wheel landing gear arrangement is weathercock. Weathercock is the tendency of the aircraft to want to head into the wind. Aircraft with nose wheel arrangements are far less susceptible to weathercock. As you move the aircraft along the taxiway, control the speed with the power setting. Do not use the brake to control the speed as it puts unnecessary wear on them. Taxi slowly. A slower moving aircraft is easier to stop. Keep in mind, it takes a few seconds from the time you change the speed and direction of your aircraft until the change actually occurs. As well, before moving the aircraft, make sure your view of the taxiway is clear. In a tailwheel plane, this may mean zigzagging a bit to make sure there is nothing in your way. As mentioned earlier, wind is the greatest variable in how you will control your aircraft while taxiing. If you are moving directly into a crosswind, turning the control column into the direction of the wind will deflect the ailerons to help you maintain directional control. Applying the rudder will help keep the aircraft from turning into the wind and maintain a straight path down the taxiway. If you want to turn while taxiing into the wind, use the control column to assist you.
If you want to turn to the right, turn the control column to the left. For a left turn, you would turn the control column right. Special care is needed when taxiing into quartering winds. Say, for example, you are taxiing due south. Any wind from the northeast or northwest would be a quartering tailwind. When taxiing in strong quartering tailwinds, make sure the elevator is down and the aileron on the side from which the wind is coming is also down. As well, avoid sudden bursts of power and sharp braking. In the case of a strong quartering headwind, the aileron on the side the wind is coming from should be up and the elevator should be neutral. Some makers of nose wheel planes recommend a different use of ailerons in quartering winds. Always follow the manufacturer's recommendations. When you turn from downwinds into the wind, make sure you slow down. This is because speed will aggravate the tendency of the aircraft to turn into the wind. The additional centrifugal force, along with the top heaviness of the aircraft, could cause it to tip over or rest on one wing. The amount of power you will need to taxi depends on the condition of the taxiway. A soft or very rough surface will require more power. Unless indicated otherwise, it is best to taxi with the control column held firmly back. You will find the response to your attempts to steer the aircraft varies according to the wind. In still air, the aircraft maneuvers almost as easily as an automobile. However, in windy conditions, it may take a bit of time between your actions and their effect on the aircraft. Also, if you are taxiing a tailwheel aircraft, you may find the need to anticipate actions before they are required. For example, when turning into the wind, you would have to anticipate the need to apply opposite rudder pressure to slow the turn so that it does not become too sharp. Safety should govern your taxiing speed. Make sure you are traveling at a speed that gives you complete control of the aircraft, as well as the ability to stop and turn where necessary. A good rule of thumb to remember is the stronger the wind, the slower your taxiing speed. If you are taxiing on a soft, muddy, or slushy surface, maintain a slow, steady speed to avoid halting the aircraft. The need to apply full power to get moving again is hard on the engine, and you run the risk of picking up debris on the propeller and other parts of the aircraft, which can cause damage. When you start to taxi a nose wheel aircraft, first let it roll forward slowly, then center the nose wheel. This will prevent you from sideswiping another aircraft or nearby obstruction. Even very minor collisions on the ground can cause expensive damage to an aircraft. Have outside help if you are taxiing on ice, in high winds, or in a crowded area. Keep your eyes on the signalman at all times and obey his signals. Make sure you are familiar with the standard system of marshalling signals. While taxiing in a clear area, there are three instruments you should check. The turn and bank indicator, the attitude indicator, and the heading indicator. The attitude indicator should remain steady at all times when you are taxiing. While taxiing straight, the turn and bank needle and ball should both be straight. The heading indicator should hold steady. In a left turn, the turn and bank needle should move to the left and the turn and bank ball should be to the right. The heading indicator will show a decreasing number of degrees. When turning right, the opposite should occur. The turn and bank needle will be right the ball left and the heading indicator will show an increasing number of degrees. One last point on taxiing. Never block a taxiway unnecessarily. If for some reason the engine warm-up or run-up will hold up traffic behind you, move out of the way to carry out these procedures. Before moving on to the next section on attitudes and movements, take time to complete these review questions. When taxiing in strong winds, the flight controls must be held in certain positions. Describe the positions for a wind coming from the right rear and then for a wind coming from the front left. When taxiing in strong winds, the flight controls must be held in certain positions. Describe the positions for a wind coming from the right rear 
and then for a wind coming from the front left. If the wind is coming from the right rear of the aircraft, both the right aileron and the elevator should be down. If the wind is coming from the front left, the left aileron should be up and the elevator neutral. Referring to the previous question, why is it necessary to have the controls in these positions? Referring to the previous question, why is it necessary to have the controls in these positions? Putting the controls in position allows you to maintain directional control in a quartering wind. In this section of the video, you will be shown the range of attitudes of the aircraft and the movements necessary to produce and control them. You will also be shown how to control yaw. All aircraft attitudes are considered as being relative to the horizon. The basic attitude of an aircraft is termed the cruise attitude. It is defined as the attitude necessary for level flight at a constant altitude and airspeed using a power setting recommended for cruise range. At cruise altitude, the wings are parallel to the horizon. Cruise attitude is the datum or reference point to which all other attitudes of flight are related. The attitudes of flight are grouped in two categories, pitch attitudes and bank attitudes. Pitch is the movement of the aircraft around its lateral axis. A pitch attitude is any attitude of the nose above or below the reference datum. If the nose is above the datum, the aircraft has a nose-up attitude. If the nose is below the datum, it has a nose-down attitude. The pitch attitude will be reflected on the flight instruments. In a nose-up attitude, you will notice a decrease in airspeed and the aircraft will be above the horizon bar of the attitude indicator. Conversely, in a nose-down attitude, the airspeed increases and the aircraft drops below the horizon bar of the attitude indicator. Pitch is produced and controlled by the elevators. When you raise the elevators by pulling back on the control column, the nose pitches up. If you push forward on the control column to lower the elevators, the nose pitches down. Bank attitudes refer to the attitude of the wings relative to the datum. It is caused by the rolling movement of the aircraft around the longitudinal axis and is produced and controlled by the ailerons. Again, you will see the banking attitude reflected on the instruments. When an aircraft is banked, the aircraft in the attitude indicator will be banked in relation to the horizon bar. The turn and bank indicator needle will be deflected in the direction of the turn. In a coordinated turn, the ball will be centered. The heading indicator will show a change in direction. For left turns, it will show decreasing degrees of heading. For right turns, you will notice an increase in degrees of heading. As mentioned earlier, the banking attitude is produced and controlled by the ailerons. The ailerons are controlled by the right and left movement of the control column. When the control column is turned right, the aircraft rolls to the right. Turning the control column to the left causes the aircraft to roll to the left. During flight, you might put the aircraft in both a pitch and banking attitude. The instruments will reflect a combination of what we have already shown you. Let's use the example of a coordinated bank to the right in a nose-up attitude. First, you will see a decrease in airspeed. The aircraft will be above the horizon bar on the attitude indicator. Because you are climbing, you will note the altimeter showing a constant increase in altitude. The needle on the turn and bank indicator will deflect to the right and the ball will be centered. The heading indicator will show increasing degrees of heading. The last point you will cover in this tape is yaw. Yaw is the movement of the aircraft about its vertical axis and is an undesirable movement. It is caused by turbulence, power changes, side slip, aileron drag, or improper use of the rudder. Yaw is controlled by the rudder, 
not produced by it. If yaw is not controlled, the aircraft will slip or skid and may ultimately roll. To maintain balanced flight, it is necessary to control yaw. Now, take the time to review the attitude and movements. When at cruise RPM, what indicated airspeed can you expect in that aircraft? When at cruise RPM, what indicated airspeed can you expect in the aircraft? This will vary from aircraft to aircraft. The cruising range is outlined in the manufacturer's manual. When placing an aircraft in a banked attitude, what movements do you use? When placing an aircraft in a banked attitude, what movements do you use? When an aircraft is banked, it moves about its longitudinal axis. This movement is known as roll and is controlled by the ailerons. The ailerons are operated by turning the control column to the left or the right. How is yaw prevented? How is yaw prevented? The yawing movement may be prevented and controlled by the use of the rudder.